I welcome everyone here this evening to this explosive service of communion. Jeremiah 6, 16, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Tonight, subject is hindrances to divine direction. Hindrances to divine direction. Our objective tonight is to understand the things that hinder people from receiving or hearing from God. Receiving or hearing from God. It's important to know as we have established that divine direction is a lifesaver. A lifesaver. Divine direction is a destiny saver. Human lives and destinies are literally anchored on direction. I am so excited because in the course of this month, God is opening the eyes of people, the ears of people. People are dreaming prophetic dreams and remembering them, those who were forgetting before. Divine direction is a non-negotiable capital asset of human life and destiny. The woman just testified. She said life was easier when she could hear God. It was easier. Things were much easy. Much more easy when she could hear God. The question is, what are the hindrances to divine direction? Number one, is the lack of value for divine direction. The lack of value for divine direction. Stand in the way. Let me show you which way to go. They say we will not. Many have no value for the will of God for their lives. They don't have any value for the purpose of God for their lives. So they live life to chance. They live life to random motion. They enter businesses carelessly. Get married carelessly. Travel abroad carelessly because I mean, I'm relocating to Canada, I'm relocating to Germany, I'm relocating to Ireland or wherever it is, just because there, there was an opening. They, they have no value for the will of God for their lives, no value for the plan of God, no value for the purpose of God. So there is so much frustration, frustration frustrated relationships, Frustrated marital end of, uh, connections, frustrated business investments. Listen to this. What you give yourself is not as valuable as what God gives you. What you give yourself can never be as profitable as what God gives you. Whatever it is, you are the one who gave yourself that wife or you gave yourself that, 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 that you took yourself to America or you gave yourself this or that. It's possible to be everything you want without God. It's possible to be something without God, but that thing cannot be as profitable as what God gives you. Also, what you achieve for yourself can never be as wonderful as what God achieves with you. What you achieve for yourself 
can never be as wonderful as what God achieves for you or with you. There could be self-made millionaires and self-made billionaires. But the millions and the billions will not give you as much rest and usher you into the realm of wonders as what God does for you. And I want you to listen to this. What you do for yourself is subject to earthly forces. Can be subject to earthly forces. But what God does for you is superior to earthly forces. That is, you can rise to prominence or, and rise to anything or millions or anything by yourself minus God. But those things are under, under the control of the forces of the earth. Inflation, deflation, recession, depression, anything can still affect you. But what, whatever God does for you is superior to earthly forces. Let God be involved in your marriage and let's see the witch that can tear you apart. Very, very important. So, beloved brothers and sisters, many are not hearing God or receiving from God because they don't discern the value. What is the difference between being led by God and being led by self? It is the difference between Abraham and Lot. When God called Abraham, he led him out and I said, go to the place I will show you. When Lot was separating from Abraham, Ab Lot led himself. The Bible said he lifted up his eyes and saw the well-watered regions of Sodom. Genesis chapter 13 verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah even as the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt as thou comest unto Zohar. And Lot chose what he saw. Not all that glitters is gold. Please learn from Lot. Not everything that is good for the moment has a future. You didn't hear what I just said. That is why God must lead. That is why God must direct. Not everything that appears good for the moment has a future. Everything Lot saw was beautiful. It was flourishing. Not knowing that a few years to come, that place will be demolished. It was marked for demolition. Lord chose a place that was marked for demolition because his eyes gave him. What is the difference between being led by God and being led by self? Being led by God and being led by sight. It was the difference. It's the difference between Lord and Abraham. If sight was leading me, I wouldn't marry my wife. I told my children the other day and they were all laughing. And she told them herself, why? Because at that time, she never cared for nothing. Dre she just was anyhow. That is, medical student, didn't care for anything, just. The hair was plaited matte, and then, just permanently, and then just, just anyhow. Any dress available, shapeless. She is the one supplying me the information I'm giving now. Eh? A line skirt, jump up sleeve. Just like that. There were flashy people around. Very flashy. Spiritual. Spiritual and flashy. But God led otherwise. By his mercy, there is rest. There would be some, would have been some pressure. See, not everything that looks good in the moment has a future. 
the land of Sodom and God, the place Lord saw appeared well watered. Everything was flourishing, but there was no future. It was marked for demolition. There are people who, who look at the containers of things without looking at the content of things. And it's only God who knows the content. That good looking man that looks like uh, an angel today may be a devil inside. And you never knew. Only God knows the inside. There are men who want to marry who they will sacrifice. Very, very slick, nice guy. But deep occult guy. You know, one man told his wife, deeply in the realm of, she said, Madam, just help me die. Any amount you want, I will give you, just die. Billionaire man, who say, just die. Eh? Just agree to die. She's a very spiritual woman. She said, just, he said, just agree to die. Any amount you want, I will give you. The man said, if, the woman said, if I die, how will I spend the amount? It was like a bone in, in his neck. She became spiritual. She became firebrand. But afflictions. He said, what is all this? Just agree to die. You will never jam such men. You will never jam such women. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. That is the difference between being led of God and being led by self or being led by sight. It was the difference between Jacob and Esau. Esau had no altar for anything. Jacob was always raising altars and hearing God. Today, Jacob is still alive. They are called the people of Israel. Esau has disappeared long ago. You will not disappear in time. If you believe that, say it loud, amen. The summary is being led. The difference between being led of God and not being led of God is like the difference between light and darkness. It's like the difference between day and night. Growing up as a young Christian child in the university, even before that, my greatest passion in life was never to miss God on anything. And it will push me into prayer, push me into fasting. I valued following the plan of God to a point where I feared to miss it. Very important. Lack of value for divine direction. Number two is lack of true spirituality. Lack of true spirituality. Where a person is lacking in spirituality... That person will be lacking in sensitivity. There is a connection between your spirituality and your sensitivity. A connection between your spirituality and your connectivity with heaven. A connection between your spirituality and your receptivity. There is a connection. When your prayer life is down. When your study of the world is down. It is difficult to pick divine signals no prayer no study of the word no fasting difficult to pick divine signals proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 he said the spirit of man is the candle of the lord searching the inward parts of the belly you must your spirit must be on fire your spirit must be lighted if you must make discoveries in the realm of the spirit if you must make discoveries from the spirit of god your spirit must be lighted your spirit must be lighted your spirit must be lighted first corinthians chapter 2 and in verse 9 to verse 14 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to verse 14 say but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for them that love him but god has revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things here the deep things of god for what man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god he said, now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teach it but which the holy ghost teach it comparing spiritual things with spiritual he said but the natural man the carnal man the fleshly man the ordinary man who who lacks spirituality receive not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned because a man must be spiritually awake to pick spiritual signals a, a person must be spiritually alive to pick spiritual signals a person must be spiritually alert to pick spiritual signals somebody say a loud amen somebody say a loud amen somebody say the loud most amen so your spirit must be sound your spirit must be vibrant your spirit must be healthy if you are going to function adequately in the spiritual realm of sensitivity somebody say amen on campus in those days i can pray i could pray i mean what I, during those years of university before university and during the university my prayer schedule is between three hours and seven hours that is that is that is most times minimum was three hours right and this is praying in the in tongues non-stop right so so sharpness was at cutting edge one day i came from i came on holidays and i came home and there was a prophet in quote who was prophesying and everybody was being impacted brought bringing message for people and all manner of messages and there was this notable prophet genuine prophet of god who was unable to discern that woman and i said this woman is not of god and he said what now this is a guy this guy i'm talking about can tell you anything in your pocket he says you can tell you what but, and he was pushing i said this is not of god my spirit was so sharp that that tongue i heard was from another world not from heaven but i heard it once twice this is not god she said what do you mean i say investigate it pray and find out from god this is not god he said, really? I said, and then, he said, okay, let's pray. We prayed for the woman and asked that the power of God should come on her. If what, if what is in her is of God, let it remain. If what was in her was not of God, let it delete. And it deleted on the spot. Couldn't speak another tongue. Couldn't prophesy another prophecy. Like that person with the spirit of divination that Paul the apostle cast out. That was the end of that assignment. It ended forever. Till the day, her last day, never a prophecy, almost 30 years later. Am I communicating? Sharpness. When your spirit, when spiritual exercises increase, spiritual receptivity multiplies. Don't live your life dull like that, looking for solution everywhere. Sharpen your spirit in prayer. Sharpen your spirit with the word. Sharpen your spirit in worship. Sharpen your spirit in waiting on the Lord. We'll be talking about some of these things by Sunday when we continue on posture, on positioning for, for spiritual direction. Is God speaking to someone here? One day, uh, 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 someone was watching a picture and said, oh, that, 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 that is... This person is such a, and I say, I'd like you to check him out. God will, God will, it will be so accurate that when something it is right, it registers with your spirit. When something is wrong on the spot. One, one man brought somebody who wanted to marry. It's a pastor. He brought somebody who wanted to marry. And I looked at the two of them. I said, how were you looking before you saw the, I didn't tell him boldly in the presence of the how did you look? I didn't say anything. I said, hey, is this the person you want to marry? Father, let your will be done in their lives. He left. And it didn't work because it wasn't workable. One man brought a woman he wanted to marry and he said to me, the Lord uh, said I should marry this girl. I said to him later on, I said, if you didn't tell me and I had the permission, I would have told you because God showed me, to, showed me already. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you will not miss it. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. Before God speaks to people, the Bible says, I was in the spirit. Did you hear that? 
All right, uh, Ezekiel 37 verse 1. Not, I wasn't in the flesh. I wasn't in the, can, in the canal. He said, the, land, the, hand, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. That was Ezekiel. Ezekiel was in the spirit. John also in John chapter 1 and in verse 10. John chapter 1 verse 10. Sorry, Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. Revelation chapter 1 and in verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit. Many people are too much in the flesh. Everything, the whole from morning till night, junk keeps on entering the mind entering the spirit from one thing one movie or, or the other one thing or the other all of it junkies into the bed then they keep on from gossiping this person to talking against that person from from you know all manner of fleshly operations so the spirit is practically low now listen to this there is something we call protein energy malnutrition we are a child is not well fed with carbohydrate, but especially protein. As a result of that, one of the symptoms of this condition is apathy. This child is apathetic, listless. The meaning of that is that it, it the child does not is not conscious of it, of his of, of the environment. He pays little or no attention. Uh, he gives attention to nothing. That is how it is in the realm of the spirit. You know, when people are hungry and they are lacking in food, they don't pay attention. You know, poverty makes people to lose attention. Scarcity, shortage. They used to say that somebody is so poor that they can't pay for anything, including attention. They can't pay attention. Are you, are you following what I'm saying now? Now, transform and translate that into the realm of the spirit. Somebody can be so spiritually bankrupt that spiritual signals are flying about. He can't pick any of it. He can't pick any of it. He sees somebody who wants to kill him. He says, meet my best friend. Are you following what I'm saying? I want to introduce you. In fact, this person, I confide in him all my secrets. Nobody has helped me like this man. This is a killer who wants to kill him. But because he's apathetic and listless and uninterested and no attention in the realm of the spirit, he couldn't pick nothing. But that will never be your portion. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. I'm sure you heard the story where one man came here. First of all, he sent a text message that he's a bishop from one country and then he came on to Nigeria on mission. And uh, he came to do missionary work. And that um, he wants to, his bishop so and so, yeah, he's, he's trying to do this, he's trying to do that. So I said he should come. I, I wanted to help him. If uh, he, had, he had a mission and he's trying to go back to, whatever. I wanted to help him. The moment I set my face upon him, I knew him. And he came with his daughter. He came with his daughter, 15 year old daughter, with his friend. So I said, okay, let's go. Come here, let's go and pray. So as he stood and he was watching, I called the little girl aside. And I said, who is that man to you? He said, he carried me from the east. What? What's your relationship with him? I don't know him. She was literally abducted. You know what she said next? Please set me free from him. I told her, I said, you're already free. <laughs> Your freedom is already here. I signaled to the, to the guy and they went and organized security quickly. While he's still busy there as bishop waiting for help. His friend is an Air Force man who assisted him. He had Air Force ID card. All fake. By the time they arranged them to the police area, they began, they, after the police uh, 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 interacted with them a little, they began to talk through. 
You know, they used to call police on Lokpa. They, 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 uh, the people we talk about. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here today? That was how the mother, stepmother of the, uh, of the, the, the mother of the woman came from the east. And pastor, they went to dupe there. Dupe a whole church. Came also from the east to identify the criminal here. Do you understand what I'm saying? How many places he had gone and went free? We need sensitivity. We need sensitivity. Spiritual sensitivity. We need spiritual sensitivity. We need, and I prophesy to you today, that grace is coming upon you. But we need to sharpen our spirit. I'll be talking more about this by Sunday service. I, I said some already on uh, last Sunday. Sharpen your spirit. Feed your spirit. Don't starve your spirit. Let your spiritual man be robust and let it be fervent and let it be sharp. And you will be shocked. At how God will show things to you. Somebody say it loud, Amen. Amen. Number three challenge. I, I wish I, I, I'm hoping that I'll finish this thing today. Lack of value for divine direction. Number two, lack of true spirituality. Lack of true spirituality. And number three. So take your time in invest in your spirit. Develop it with prayer, with word, with fasting. Number three. Over busyness in life. Is an enemy hindrance. Over busyness in life, or an over well, that's all right. Over busyness in life. He said in Psalm forty-six, verse ten, "Be still, so you can know." You are too much in a hurry. There are so many people who have lives that are running in too many directions. The thought is centered on a thousand things at once. Very difficult to receive anything from God. Be still and know means there is knowledge in stillness. There is knowledge in calmness. Be still and know that I am God. He says, slow down, I know that, and know that I am God. Busy man, busy woman, busy businessman, so busy, no time for God, no time for church, so busy for, with politics, no time for God, so busy with every other thing, no time for God. He says, slow down and know that I am God. What's the meaning of this? It means there is a time to shut down. There is a time to shut down all other activities. To shut down everything and concentrate on God. To shut down everything and focus only on God. Be still and know. Concerning the captivity of Judah, Daniel shut down. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 to 3. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 to 3. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. I read the books and I understood. So I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I sought by prayer. And when he sought, he found. Our oh, master Jesus, Mark chapter 1 verse 35. A great while before day, a great while before day, he went out. Nobody was busier than Jesus, but a great while before day, he went out. Listen, beloved brothers and sisters. When people take annual leave, some take casual leave. What they use it for at times can be a function of their priorities in life. You see, I work Monday to, to Friday. I don't have time. Okay. There's something called casual leave. You can take a week. Supposing you took that one week, broke it into two. The first three days of that one week is praying, Waiting on the Lord, studying the word, studying the books, 
catching up on your sermon notes and being sharp and sensitive to hear what God has to say to you for the next level. And you are just intense in the spirit. How profitable that would be. What a difference it will make to life. By the time three days are over, you prayed in tongues for three hours, five hours per day for those three days. You've gone through the book of Acts of the Apostles. You've gone through the book of Proverbs. You have, you have, you have, you have read a book and you came out loaded, fired. It took the next four days. Hit the road running. Work has not allowed me to win souls. Let me do rugged evangelism. Let me win souls and plant them in the Lord. Let me be a Christian. Let me be fruitful. You have not chosen me, I have chosen you that you should go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name. And you, you hit the road in practical, rugged evangelism. Am I communicating? And by the time those four days are over, you have done seven days of aggressive spiritual exercise. And then heaven say, hey, that man is due for promotion. Make him the head of that organization. He has, he has a kingdom mindset that can influence a system from up down if you place him on top. Am I communicating? That is how to live life. That is how to live life and live profitably. That is how to live life and see drastic results. And then you appear. And then the witch that was a notable witch that gave you trouble saw you coming and he saw another person coming and see fire in your eyes. And he cannot stay in the same office with you anymore. Because you went and charged up yourself equal to any devil and any emergency. Somebody say aloud, amen. amen. Did you receive some direction just now? It's very, very clear. Very, very clear. Very, very clear. You sleep with expectation. Waking up with revelation. Trusting God with desperation. I need to know what to do. I need steps to take. I can't, I can't live my life by random motion. I can't live life to assumption. And then, there you are. And before you, you, you can say, praise the Lord. He's speaking to you in every way. Speaking to you in your dreams. You open the Bible, you see something. You sat in church, the pastor is preaching something. You are hearing something from his voice. That God is speaking to you. And then you are practically in charge of Satan the devil. And show him the way back to hell. Somebody say aloud, Amen. I see something changing in somebody's life. You, speak, you sleep with expectation. Wake with revelation. Trust the Lord with all desperation. And before you know it, your steps are guided. Something is happening to someone here. If you are that one, say aloud, Amen. If you are that one, say the loudest, Amen. If you are that one, shout the loudest, Amen. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? In case you are, because, you are busy because of people, God forbid. If you are no longer here, those people will continue living as if you never existed. So calm down. Be wise. And I'm going to say something more just now. You are not made for business. Business was made for you. You bought the phone. The phone did not buy you. You may make up your mind from this moment forward. After a certain moment of the day, no more phones. Let me face my life. How many of you have ever been in the midst of very serious praying and a call is coming in? And it appears like a call you cannot ignore. What if the phone was off? The person will call and it couldn't reach you. But by the fact that you, you saw a call coming, whether you answer it or not, you are distracted. Especially if it is somebody whose call you must answer. Whether, and it's coming in the midst of prayer. And at that time, maybe a revelation was coming. Maybe you are studying the word. Something was about to jump at you. Then, I, oh no. Should I answer? This? I can't answer. I'm praying now. Uh, 
man, if you have a great future, the devil will be on your case. He will move on somebody to call you <laughs> at the wrong time. <laughs> Say, call him. <laughs> you didn't hear the devil entered Judas. <laughs> Judas was on his own. Devil entered. <laughs> he said, this man is about to receive a light that will change his whole generation. Call him. <laughs> you miss that moment. Nobody knows when that moment will come again. When Israel missed it, it took them 40 years to return back to the same spot. It was meant to be 11 days journey from Kadesh Benia. Don't know when the cycle will come back again. Because you are not the only one. God has other people he's dealing with. You will never miss it. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody shout the loud and say amen. There are some people Satan sent to look for your trouble. Say, offend him. Just keep on offending him. No, Papa. Daddy Gio said that one day. A man who was offending him so much, the man was the one looking for his trouble. Their general overseer said, he said, what did I do against this man? He's looking for my trouble all the time. The general overseer said, go and apologize to him. Me, apologize to him. That's the founder, Parking Diomi. Go and apologize to the man. The man was older than him in age. So he went and prostrated to the man, thinking it would change the man's mind. He said, Get out, stupid. Who are you lying down for? Get out. That was how he stood up frustrated. The man kept on looking for his trouble until one day the man told some people, He said, As for me, I, am, I know I'm going to hell. It's only who I will go with I'm looking for. <laughs> you see, as for me, hell is confirmed. It's only I'm looking for who to take with. That is somebody who was a minister, not an ordinary church member. Say he's going to hell. Am I communicating at all? So he can just make. Somebody look for Kenneth Hagin's trouble. Say, he said, Lord, what can I do about this case? God said, I'm using him to teach you love for a while. <laughs> that is the truth. You have an assignment with God. There are some people, you are their assignment. But they will never succeed. And today, every unnecessary satanic agent sent on assignment against you, against me, against any of us, we declare the assignment over forever. Assignment terminated forever. Assignment canceled forever. Assignment frustrated forever. In Jesus' precious name, let me begin to try to see how fast I can round off. And so, this is over business. I just gave a prescription that I believe somebody will use. And now, now to talk about annual leave as a whole. There are those who just spend the whole uh, time in Dubai, uh, in Paris, and moving from place to place to place until one month is over and they don't know what they did with their life. Out of that one month, you can upgrade your mentality. Short course. Out of that one month, you can intensify your spirituality. Out of that one month, you can make Deposits into heaven, into eternity. Deposits, deposits, kingdom deposits that will be unerasable. Somebody say amen. Number four is impatience with God. Why are people not receiving direction from God? Many are impatient with God, a spirit in haste. Psalm 46 verse 10 again. He said, be still, calm down, slow down, and know that I am God. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16. 28 verse 16. He said, therefore thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, 
a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, and he that believeth shall not make haste. When you believe, you don't make haste. Am I communicating? Why are people not hearing from God, receiving from God? For many people, God is too slow. God is too slow. You know, God is too slow. Made people to marry for themselves who they want. Men and women. There are those who say, if God, if, I, if God don't answer me this year, I will find myself a, a man. God is too slow. God is too slow. Turn some people who are meant to be ministers into native doctors. Hmm? Power to see. Power to hear. Power to profess. Power to do miracles. That is the rugged process it takes to have a stand with God and to mark their generation is too is too demanding. God is too slow. God is too slow made Abraham to arrange an alternative with Hagar. That alternative, like you know, is a challenge of the world till today. Saul was impatient when Samuel said, don't offer any sacrifice. After seven days, I will come and offer the sacrifice. Saul said, according to 1 Samuel chapter 13 and in verse 10, the people were scattering from him and then he forced himself and offered the sacrifice. The moment he finished that same day, seven day, Samuel arrived. Are you a priest? Are you a prophet? What business have you with sacrifice? That is not your office. That is not your calling. I told you after seven days I will come. Is today not seven days? Have I not come? So I waited. And since I saw the people scattering from me, I forced myself. And he said, because you have disobeyed God, God has rejected you as king over Israel. And Samuel turned in anger to go. And Saul held his cat of his garment. My father, please remain with me. Please honor me in the eyes of these people. And he's kept tall. And he says, so has God turned the kingdom from you. The way this cloth tall. By one act of not waiting on God. Can I say something to you? Waiting on God is not wastage of life. Don't forget it for as long as you live. Waiting on God is not equal to wastage of life. Those who wait on God don't waste in life. It's not equal to the wastage of life. Waiting on God is not wastage of time. Then what is it? Waiting on God is salvaging of life. Is the salvaging of life and destiny. You are salvaging your life. You are rescuing your life. Somebody say aloud, amen. Don't move because everybody is moving. There was a time around my life. Everybody had a marital relationship. Anywhere I looked. If you saw this one, this is his um, fiancé. If you saw this one, this is his own. If you saw that one, this is his own. I had none at that time. So one, one of uh, my guys who was establishing his pitied me. Are you hearing something? He pitied me, he said, you don't have anybody around you. Body that you don't, what, who is, who are you? Are you in a relationship? Not nothing. So he recommended somebody for me. He said, he feel in his heart that this person, not the one seated here now, another person, that, that this person is the one that God, in fact, in his heart, he feels it, that it is a person for me. He is seen for me. <laughs> he, out of compassion. Now, he didn't have a bad motive. The person he recommended was not a bad person. Very spiritual. But that wasn't it for me. You know what? <laughs> oh, 
all those relationships at that time. No, ended in marriage. Not one. <laughs> Including the my pity. <laughs> In fact, I don't want to tell you the story of that one. <laughs> Let me not tell you. <laughs> if it is a singles program, I will tell the story. Since everybody is here, I won't tell you the story. I would have mumusiously. Everybody has somebody. Let me put myself under pressure and look for somebody. That's what has happened. There are those who said yes to any man that arrived. Because I have been left behind. Let me just marry. At, the, at a point also, everybody around me was going into ministry. At, as if there was no fire. Uh, but I was passionate and fireful, but I knew it wasn't time. I knew it wasn't time. Don't move because of mass movement. Please. It may affect your destiny negatively. They, 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 pop, up, what do you call it? Is it popularity carries a vote? Is that what they used to say? In majority, it does not work most of the times, especially in the realm of the spirit. Please, please, don't move because of mass movement, don't act because of mass action. Let's be patient with God. And I will tell you something. I will tell you something. And I, want, I don't want you to forget it. And I believe that this night is a night you will never forget the remaining days of your life. Don't ever become impatient because of other people's results. Because of other people's results. Or other people's experience, experiences. Don't ever become impatient. Wait on God. Let me summarize and say this to you and don't forget it. Waiting on God will give you a speed. It will give you a speed that human effort can never give. Waiting on God it will give you a speed, a speed. I didn't move at that time when I, I saw many people moving. But when I moved, when he told me to move and I moved, the devil is aware of the movement. It will give you a speed. Summary is, moving with God gives you nothing to lose. Nothing. You would, you would have lost nothing and the devil would have gained nothing. If you wait on God and you wait on his time and you move at his time, you would have lost nothing and the devil would have gained nothing. Somebody say a loud amen. Let me round off. What are the hindrances to divine direction? Number one, the lack of value for divine direction. Number two, lack of, the lack of, lack of true spirituality. Number three, over business in life. Number four, impatience with God and number five existence in assumption and tradition existence in assumption and tradition that is I have done it this way before or it worked like this before it worked like this before or this was what someone else said he did. Let me try it. Or tradition. This is what everybody is doing. This is what has always been done. First Chronicles chapter 14 verse 14. After David had won a victory. And the same circumstance presented itself. The Philistines came again. David inquired again of God. And God said unto him, don't go like you went the last time. Turn away from them. The last time I asked you to confront them head on. This time turn away and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. 
and it shall be when thou shalt hear a sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees that then you shall go out to battle for God has come before you. Hallelujah. Somebody say a loud amen. For every new situation, there may be a new revelation. For every new situation, there may be a new revelation. So if you are married to tradition, you deliver frustration. You see? Jesus healed the blind in many ways. One, he spat on the ground. Put mud. Another one, he spoke to the blind. He touched the blind. Different ways. Somebody said, if it is today that somebody spat on the ground and, and, mold, and, and put mud on the eye of a person, and the person sees, he will found a ministry on that result. Mud and spittle, eye-opening ministries international. <laughs> and then, <laughs> you want to see, come and let me apply mud. And then they start wondering why the only the first person saw. Nobody is seen anymore. <laughs> God is too dynamic for us to, to categorize him. He is too dynamic for us to even classify him. He is too, he's too dynamic for us to cage his operations. <laughs> 